Hey everybody and welcome to Collider Movie Talk, movie talk for movie fans. I'm your host Ashley Mova and this is the daily show where we give you all of the latest news from the world of movies plus some insight into what it all means. Joining us as always is John Campia. Well greetings and salutations everybody. Welcome to the best damn movie related show on the planet Earth coming to you from right here at the Collider Video Studios here in Burbank, California and we are so glad you decided to make us part of your day. Also here, John Schnepp. Hey, what's up, everybody? Man, I am just so excited about the upcoming Jetsons movie. I mean, <laughs> oh, I don't know it if it's going to be post-apocalyptic wow. or not, but that dude Lieberman just has that, that, that skill set to just, I think, pop off one of the greatest scripts ever written. I also hear Christian Harloff. I love the smack talk from Schnepp. Hello, everybody. How are you? Great. <laughs> <laughs> Many people were a bit surprised when they saw Michael Shannon, a.k.a. General Zod, appear in the Batman vs. Superman trailer that debuted at Comic-Con last month. And now things just got really confusing. In a recent interview with Vulture, the actor talked a bit about his character in the new movie and said the following. I was in my costume and I couldn't use my fingers because in the sequel I have flippers instead of hands. Hands. So I had these wax flippers on my fingers and I couldn't open the door and I could hear Zach being like, where's Shannon? Where the F is he? And the whole crew was standing around. I was like knocking on the door with my flippers. Let me out of here. <laughs> Batman vs. Superman opens in theaters in March. John, how do you take Michael Shannon's comments? Well, first of all, that is a funny story. I can just see somebody on Moose at the director's like, help. The secondly, what? <laughs> what? <Yeah. laughs> Now, I, okay, wait. Now, hold on. Does he mean flippers, flippers? Or does he mean flipper like things? Or does he mean uh, what? I don't, I don't, I don't get it. So, okay, so the first thing my mind raises to is, is this some sort of new villain for Aquaman? Or, and I have nothing to base that on. That's wild speculation. Um, well, that ain't Doomsday, and that ain't, uh, you know, Anybody that ain't Brainiac, that it's, ain't it's like, Tusk. Yeah, it's yeah, it's pretty <laughs> much Tusk. Like. Yeah. I was like, what? Fin flippers on his yeah. hands. Okay, yeah. I'm trying I can't to imagine. Knock on the door. Now know? I'm I'm going to assume it's not a traditional understanding of the word, f- like a dolphin's flipper. I guess. I mean, maybe it's just some kind of thin like thing. I I don't know. Okay, so a couple interesting things. One, I'm guessing then he's not just a corpse. That we see just for a second. I thought when we saw that shot in the trailer where they have the zip bag open and he's sitting there, I thought, okay, that's a, that's a prosthetic of some sort. That's a fake Michael Shannon, but I guess he's actually in the film and playing a role, which I'm excited to hear about. That I love Michael Shannon. I thought he was terrific as General Zod. That being said, what? I okay. I'm I'm confused. I mean, anyway, Schnapp, you read the, the quote. What do you take away from it? I take it uh, that Michael Shannon. Uh, you know, that's his descriptive terminology of something that isn't a flipper. Like, he's just like, uh, yeah, so, I mean, right? like, I had these flippers on my hand. Like, have you ever seen him talk? He's just like this, so like a nice guy, but he's like, has this way about describing stuff. So I can guarantee you that they're not flippers. They're not like flippers, like how you would imagine a flipper or little miniature flippers. I'm guessing there's some kind of weird prosthetics, which like make it hard for him to use the door or something like that. Which then leads me to believe that maybe he is uh, going to be playing Doomsday. I agree with you 100%. I think that it, it's some kind of performance capture. Yes. The way that it's built out, it might look like a flipper or whatever it is, too. And, and he is in the Doomsday suit. Or maybe he's just some kind of weird Frankenstein monster in the beginning to where he, he's going to be in it for a couple scenes until we eventually evolve into what we know as Doomsday. Yeah. Um, or he might just be playing Doomsday. But no, I don't think he's going to be like Tusk or, or <laughs> be like some kind of fish creature. I think it's just, like you said, Schnapp, I think it's just the way he described the... Um, Whatever they are. Yeah, it's like some kind of, okay, something that can be described as a flipper. But it, it is interesting that he chooses the word to say, I was in my costume. Right. Instead of saying I was in my motion capture suit or whatever. I mean, I can't believe it's a literal <laughs> dolphin flipper where he's going to be. Yeah. It can't be. Yeah. No, but he, when he like, said his fingers. So he's like saying there's flippers on my fingers. So then you're like, okay, he's describing. He doesn't know what to call it. So right. he's calling it flippers. Well, no, he says, I couldn't use my fingers. Because in the sequel, I have flippers instead of hands. Right. And then like, afterwards, he says, you know, they're my, I was trying to knock with uh, the way he described it. I was trying to knock on the door with my flippers. <laughs> Let me out of here. <laughs> I, okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm officially confused. This could mean a million different mm-hmm. things. And But I, I think both of you guys are right. I, I think this is just his way of describing whatever it is. But, I mean, Doomsday has fingers. Doomsday has five distinct digits. And... 
So, I mean, I don't know. Well, maybe he's just punking us all. Maybe he's just punking the, be punkin the interviewer. Us. I mean, I anyway, I guess jump in the comments section. Let us know what do you make of this comment from Michael Shannon because by far – this Weird. is the strangest thing I've heard come out of Batman versus Superman yeah. so far. So let us know what you guys think about hey, it. I would love to see any artists out there to make a Michael Shannon on a manatee. <laughs> oh, yeah. like a weird like manatee yeah. thing with Lex Luthor having a drink. Like, ah, look at my new creature. You know, I don't know. And <laughs> Kevin Smith in the background <laughs> going, copyright right. violation. Tusk 2. Tusk yeah. 2. <laughs> All right. What's next? According to a report in Deadline, Warner Brothers Pictures has optioned for a pitch for a feature film adaptation of Dante's Inferno, the third part of Dante's 14th century The Divine Comedy Poem. The film will apparently focus around Dante, who, finding himself lost after the death of his beloved Beatrice, is met in the woods by the long-dead poet Virgil. In Dante's Inferno, Virgil guides Dante through the nine circles of hell to save the woman he loves. Schnepp, what do you think of WB developing a Dante's Inferno movie? movie i think it sounds really fun it could be really spooky i mean this even in the description you're like oh right there's like a weird dead poet like i will help you see you know rescue <laughs> your love it depends on who they get to direct it really i mean i think the story is always fun dante's you know dante's inferno is a great story the nine realms of hell um depends on who they get to make it now so yeah, I think I think that is the biggest question. Who do they, who ends up directing something like this? The Warner Brothers, when it comes to properties like this, they tend to go, and I don't mean this in a bad way. I mean this in a good way. They tend to go safe. They tend to get a seasoned, veteran-proven mm -hmm. storyteller to come and do these types of films. And I have a feeling they're going to do it. And if they do, I'm going to be quite excited. Now, if memory serves me right, though, in the original poem, I don't I don't think Dante goes into hell to rescue Beatrice. I don't think Beatrice is a part of that story. I think she's just, he's, you know, lost after her death. I don't think in the original story he's actually going in, but maybe they're just thinking for a theatrical sense, this gives him a point or something like that, and they're going to do it that way. Mm -hmm. Maybe, I guess, maybe I'm not remembering right. But look, I think you're right. You attach the right name to this, to Helmet, this could be really exciting. This could be really something special. I agree. I'd like to see this story told, and I'd like to see it with the right director, because what, I'm, what I'd like to see is a version of, um, you know, whether it be like Jacob's Ladder or something along right. those lines, even, even What Dreams May Come, or something like a, a field of like seven would be interesting with, with this property, as opposed to something like Priest or Legion, which right. is, or Constantine, which right. it easily could become. Yeah. Um, I know some people like, like Constantine. I just thought it just looked a little bit as too CGI, and that's what I'm worried about, is that the CGI is like what we just went through with Hitman. Mm. It's like, you're sucking me right out of it, but if you make a, just tell me the story, give me that the, with creepiness, but yet put me in that world, but yet I feel like I'm there and I'm not sucked out into a computer world. It could be interesting. I think the key here will be getting Skip Woods to write it. I Good think Lord. we can all agree on that. All right, folks, <laughs> we've reached that part of the show now for buy or sell. Here's how this works. In front of her, Ashley's got a few other items in the world of movie news. She's going to run them down, and those of us at the table are just going to say whether we buy it or sell it. So, Ashley, what do we got? Brand new Spider-Man star Tom Holland has just been announced as the newest cast member of the upcoming film The Lost City of Z. The film is already in production. Holland has already joined his new castmates in Ireland, where they will be shooting for five weeks. The Lost City of Z follows Percy Fawcett, a conscripted soldier and born explorer who disappeared disappeared in the 1920s while searching for a mythical city in the Amazon jungles of Brazil that he believed he discovered on a prior expedition. The film also stars Sons of Anarchy's Charlie Hunnam, American Sniper Santa Miller, and Twilight's Robert Pattinson, and will hit theaters sometime in 2016. Christian Barisal Tom Holland joining the cast of The Lost City of Z. I buy it, and I buy it for a couple of different reasons. The first is I buy it because I want to see more of what Tom Holland can do because we're going to associate him as Spider-Man for a while. Even if the, the Spider-Man standalone movie doesn't do well, we know Civil War will, so this is going to be as Spider-Man for a little bit. So we're going to associate him as Spider-Man. So I'd like to see him do stuff very similar to what we were talking about yesterday with Hugh Jackman. And even though Hugh Jackman is a lot older and has been doing this for a while, but I like the fact that we're going to see this kid. He's doing a bunch of different things. And I have to be honest, like one of the things that really sells me on this, hear me out, is Robert Pattinson. Because I think that when you see, when you hear, the second you hear Twilight, I mean, Star Wars has a book coming out called Twilight Company. And we all, every time we hear it, we go, oh, just because the word, they've ruined the word Twilight. <laughs> and I think that also one of the things that has happened there is that both Robert Pattinson and Kristen Stewart have, it's hard for them to shake that yeah. smell. Now, that last movie that he did with Guy Pearce, um, and I'm, The Rover, thank you. He was incredible in yeah. that movie. And I will use that word, incredible. The 
kid has chops. So I want to see this new wave of actors. And even though Sienna Miller's been a while, uh, been around for a while, she's starting to make more of a presence now. You know, with American Sniper, and then mm-hmm. she's doing the the other movie with the Chef, I think, with with Bradley Cooper. Uh, burnt. Burnt. Well, about the chef. Yes. Um, so it and was then, called Chef at one point. It was right, and then Charlie Hunnam. I want to see, and this seems like a really cool premise. So I want to see this kid join this new wave of actors because it gets a little tiresome sometimes when you hear like, oh. Uh, Chris Pratt's going to be in a movie and The Rock's going to be in a movie. And it's like, these are newer actors, so I, I'd like to see the new wave. Yeah, I, I got to buy it for a couple of reasons. One, I just like the sounds of this movie. This sounds like a really fun movie ex- if executed well. You're right. Robert Pattinson has proven this, not just in The Rover. He's proven a couple of his other projects as well. This dude can act, like seriously act. Will he be able to shake the stink of Twilight for a lot of people? And that I mean, no disrespect to people who are fans of the series, but for a lot of film fans, it's got a out real there, cheese factor to it. Yeah, a lot of people did not like that film, and, and it, this kind of a negative connotation to it. And so, can he shake that? And I think we need to find out in the next year or two if he can. I hope people give him the shot because, like I said, he's and like you said, he's turned out to be actually quite a remarkable actor, giving him the right material. Charlie Hunnam, I adored him in Sons of and the Sons of Anarchy, but. I did not think he was all that great in Pacific Rim. So I'm really curious to see how he is in this and how he is in that King Arthur movie he's got coming out too. What jumps out to me about this story, though, is goes back to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This just really reaffirms what we have suspected all along. Spider-Man's role in Civil War is going to be this big. This big. They, they were shooting that movie for weeks before they even cast Spider-Man. Then they cast it. Then he's there. They're still shooting Captain America Civil War right now. And where's Tom Holland? He's in Ireland shooting another movie. He was on set for what, two weeks? Maybe? So I think that kind of just reasserts the fact that Spider-Man is going to be this big in Civil War for now. And that's probably a good thing. They're probably just going to introduce him, give us a little taste of him in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, let that wave of awesomeness hit everybody, and, and then you know move on to a standalone movie, and then get him in more Marvel Cinematic films as well a little bit later on. So overall, I love the sound of this. I, I can't wait to see this kid, Tom Holland, in, in The Heart of the Sea, which I know we're going to talk about a little bit more later. That looks really cool, too. So for me, it's a big buy. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to buy it, but I have yet to see him act in anything. So what else? What was he, was he in? The Impossible, mm-hmm. which he was great at. Oh, my God, that's right. Yeah. I did see that. Yeah, he was but that's great like so many years ago. He was like 12 or something, something like right? Three or four years ago. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he was 12. He was, uh, was he 12? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, The Impossible was great. So, all right, I did see Tom Holland, so, so I can gauge it somewhat. But it's still a little harder for me to gauge, you know, buying him in a brand new action film. All I could say is the film itself sounds interesting and the cast that they have, like Sienna Miller uh, I think Charlie Hunnam's a great actor, uh, given the right property. I thought he was great in Pacific Rim, but, you know, um, so, yeah, I'll buy it. All right, what's next? According to a report in Variety, Thor The Dark World and the upcoming Thor Ragnarok screenwriter Christopher Yost has been brought on to develop the long-awaited Masters of the Universe film over at Sony's Columbia Pictures. Masters of the Universe follows Prince Adam, who has the ability to transform into a warrior called He-Man. As He-Man, Adam becomes the last hope for a magical land called Eternia, ravaged by the evil Skeletor. John Byrasel, Christopher Yost coming on board for Masters of the Universe. I'm going to give it a buy simply on the basis that it just means something's happening with, with Masters of the Universe and He-Man. How this has not gotten a re, redo over since the um, Dolph, Lundgren. Uh, Dolph Lundgren version, I don't know. And I had a lot of stupid fun. I, have, I kind of had the same feelings and place in my heart for that Dolph Lundgren He-Man movie as I do for Mortal Kombat. Yeah, it's a terrible movie, but I love it. I, I, I can watch it. If I'm flipping through TV and that show, that movie's on, man, I'm stopping to watch it. I shouldn't, but I do. Um, so, so, And this is a property that just should be on the screen. This is a very cinematic property if you do it the right way. Now, I, I didn't like... Uh, Thor 2 as much as I... Because I just adored the first Thor film. I didn't like Thor 2 nearly as much. I still liked the film, but it was a weak villain and stuff like that. It had some problems. Um, so, But it wasn't, a, it wasn't a throwaway movie either. So I'm okay with who's writing it. I'm just happy that it's happening. Christian... I, first of all, I need to know if you buy or sell this, but you actually have some background with this property. Yeah. Tell us about that. Um, well, as far as the story, I, I, I buy it. Uh, and, I, and because of being involved uh, with with the property is that what i always thought the way that masters of the universe should be 
portrayed on the big screen is Star Wars meets Lord of the Rings. That's I what, always love the way you describe that. That's what yeah. this property is. It's what it should be. The problem is that a lot of people who don't understand the property and look back to that 80s property just see the purple pants and the silly tiger and go, that's silly. What they forget about is the comic and the actual toys that inspired it. And you look at that. There was also, in 2002, they rebooted the cartoon and they yes. gave it that feel. And you can find those those episodes in the mythology. It was really rich. Um, and so the guy who wrote Thor, even though Thor 2 had a lot of problems with the villains and stuff too, he seems to have that tone down with especially the stuff in um, Asgard. I mean, that's that's yeah, attorney. That was actually really good that's stuff. That's attorney. So the, I'm, I, that's why I'm buying the story. As far as my story went, when I worked at Warner Brothers for Joel Silver, if you guys don't, aren't familiar with what turnaround is is called, it's like when a when a script when a, when a st- certain studio has a property for a while and now it's now it's it's been can be shopped around, you can grab a hold of it. It's turnaround and John Woo had a prop had written a script for uh, Masters Universe and it, I love John Woo but it was terrible I mean it had He-Man going and getting cheeseburgers like literally asking <laughs> Tila to get cheeseburgers and I remember saying we could get this we could get this property and they're like, they're like why would we want this I'm like because of everything I just told you guys what I had to do was I had to go because at the time I wasn't I was like a development assistant at the time so I had to go through Financers, and I had to go through Village Roadshow, and I went through Legendary, and there was a guy there, and I won't say his last name, but this is a guy named Neil, and I went to him, and I told him the whole entire idea. I pitched a thing to him. He's like, "This is great." We developed it for a while. Mark Riley, my good friend, wrote a big long trip treatment about it, hit the tone, took it to him. We were developing it for a while, and then finally, the guy's like, "You know, we're working on Conan right now, so it's not going to be, it's not going to work out." So then I we started doing it internally. My buddy Naveed, who was there. Like this thing's happening. Then we got a phone call from Justin Marks's agent. Who Justin Marks, great screenwriter. I love this guy. He's a great guy. He's had Voltron going for a long time. His agent calls and says, "Well, Justin has this pitch that his buddy Neil took to him. Uh, the same Neil that I happen to pitch my idea to. Neil's a thief, a crook. Uh, uh, he's a horrendous <laughs> person. But because of all of it, we were able to bring that. We all met together." And brought it, and Mattel was was on board for it, and Joel Silver actually took the rights for it and got it from Warner Brothers. But as things happen, it just it, the development people too many cooks in the kitchen, and then it eventually went away from there too. So I'm glad that now, hopefully, somebody takes that vision. It needs to be science versus science and magic. Mm, you yeah. can do that. You can. This is a series of films, which is what Yost correctly. did with with Thor too yes. a little bit. You're, so you're right. He's kind yeah. of got that toned down. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I'm going to buy it uh, for a lot of the reasons you guys said, uh, be, uh, specifically because he's already written Thor, and Thor really is that the, the cinematic Thor is what they should be doing with He-Man. Um, uh, if you go back to Dolph Lundgren, the Dolph Lundgren uh, He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, the director was has, has said on, you know, in interviews, I was trying to make DCs the new gods. That's what he turned Master of the Universe in. He just kind of replaced a bunch of characters and and had you know Skeletor basically being Dark Side. So it's like those kinds of things have been around for a while. I'd love to see a real cool version of Master of the Universe. And I like you. I I like the the cheesy Masters of the Universe Quildor and his like little weird like flying you know yeah. ships and stuff. <laughs> it's really cheesy, but uh, you know it's amazing when you think about it. You're like. We're still talking about them developing a He-Man right. movie. Why? No nobody one's knows, made nobody one knows how 20, to do it. over twenty that's, twenty-five that's years. The point. They just no, don't know how to do it. Nobody's got a grip on that. And, and you're right that Star Wars meets Lord of the Rings. That's mm-hmm. the way you approach He-Man. I'm still here. I'm still here. <laughs> Give me a call. <laughs> All right. What's next? According to a report in the Hollywood Reporter, actor Dwayne the Rock Johnson has signed on to star in the upcoming Disney film Jungle Cruise based on the popular theme park attraction. Crazy Stupid Love and Focus directors John Requa and Glenn Ficarra are writing the script for the movie, which marks the sixth film based on a Disney attraction, joining films such as Pirates of the Caribbean, Tomorrowland, The Country Bears, The Haunted Mansion, and Mission to Mars. Schnepp Byrasel Dwayne Johnson joining Jungle Cruise. Uh, I'm going to buy it simply because it's Dwayne The Rock Johnson. I mean, I saw San Andreas with, like, not really that much interest. I was like, I'm just going to go see some cities explode, you know, some mindlessness. And he just makes films fun. Uh, You know, he's sure, he's got a couple of, you know, stupid films. Didn't he do The Tooth Fairy? Yeah, but that was part of his Disney thing. I know, but I'm just saying everybody's got those things like, ha, you know. But it's like, for the most part, every single thing I've seen him in, he just takes it and elevates it because of his charisma, because of his character. So for that reason and that reason alone, I'm going to buy another Disney ride movie. I, surprisingly enough, I'm going to sell this. I love me, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, mm-hmm. and I love Crazy Stupid Love. That is that is like one of the more underappreciated films of the past 10 years, I think. I thought that movie was really smart, despite the last scene in the movie and whatever. But, um, and so these guys coming on board to write something with Dwayne The Rock Johnson, I feel like I should be jumping up and down and going by. 
but I just can't for a couple reasons. One, you were mentioning Tooth Fairy and that one where he was the quarterback dad. Right, and, right. They, and well, It actually wasn't a bad movie, but Dwayne, didn't we learn that it was time for you to move away from those Disney films? Like, didn't we learn that lesson? And I'm starting to feel a little bit of rock fatigue. <laughs> it feels like every single week we're talking about he's doing Big Trouble in Chi- Little China. He's doing Baywatch. He's doing... There's like three or four other films in the past like two months. I feel like that we've talked about Dwayne The Rock Johnson now starring in this and this. And it's like, if you're going to do that and make them all very cool and interesting... I can get on board with that. Doing a, a raunchy comedy like Baywatch to juxtapose against some of the other stuff, I can get into that. I can get into Big old tr- Trouble in Little China. But didn't we learn our lesson already, Rock? That it's time to don't get yourself hooked back into these Disney probably family films. But so who knows? Maybe it'll be the best film he's ever done in his career. We'll approach it with an open mind. But for now, I got to sell it. I agree. I'm going to have to sell it. I think that if it was a month or two months ago, and this was the first thing that we heard that he signed on to, I would buy it for all the reasons that you mentioned, Jeanette, because. Everything that you said about The Rock, I have said about the last like four things. Like, yeah, I love The Rock. He brings so much. I'm like, wait a minute. How many times are we going to say this? Because he's working on everything. And right. I think that that's where it comes down to is the fatigue. I agree with you that once this movie comes out and we see it, even if it's terrible, you're going to watch it and go, okay, I'm entertained because The Rock's so good. It's just that he's doing everything. And I agree. The one thing you know, it, with, with Disney is that there is a new regime now. And it, that's true. And there is yeah. a new kind of development. It's the way that they market properties, as, as was evident in, at D23, the way that they approach these properties. Yeah. So the Tooth Fairy days are, are, are yeah. long and gone as far as they're going to develop, especially, you know, look what they've done. Who knows what they're going to finish with Pirates of the Caribbean. Hopefully the, the next one turns out good. But they're aware that they have to give more than just the name of these properties. So I hope that it's good. My my only concern is that The Rock is doing everything right now. I want to see him go more into the more serious action hero that we thought he was going to be um, when he first announces that he was going to be acting in like 2001. But, you know, to that point of him being announced in so many different films, a lot of these films never actually get That's made. true. So, yeah. like, Big Trouble in Little China. It's not actually on the dockets yet. There's no like release date. There's no anything. It's just something in development. They've got somebody's writing a script, and right. he might be attached right. to it. Then this could be like a Jumanji too. It could be fun. It could be yeah. Like I mean, that's that's why I buy it is because yeah. Would I go see a movie called Jungle Cruise? Probably not. Right. But with this idea of oh, The Rock's going to be it, so it's going to be some kind of fun action film. Now I'm more interested. Right. All right, folks, it is Thursday. That means we're going to talk a little bit about what's opening this week, brought to you by our friends at AMC Theaters. Now, back on Tuesday, we talked about two of the major films opening this week in Hitman, Agent 47, and Sinister 2. But there's another one opening in American Ultra. Ashley, tell us a little bit about the film. Small town stoner Mike Howell, played by Jesse Eisenberg, spends most of his time getting high and writing a graphic novel about a superhero monkey. What Mike doesn't know <laughs> is that he was trained by the CIA to be a lethal killing machine. When the agency targets him for termination, his former handler activates his latent skills, turning the mild manner slacker into a deadly weapon. Now the utterly surprised Mike must use his newfound abilities to save himself and his girlfriend from getting wasted. Chris should audiences look forward to American Ultra? Well, I'm looking forward to it, and I think there's a lot of reasons why. It looks like Pineapple Express meets Born Identity. Um, it's got Jesse Eisenberg, who I'm a big fan of. Uh, I, li- I like, I th- and, and I think you're, you didn't like Adventureland at all, right? I did not like okay, Adventureland. So I actually yeah. did enjoy that movie, and I liked, the, I liked their chemistry. I thought that they worked, and th- like we were talking before with Robert Pattinson, I think Kristen Stewart has proven herself over the last couple of films so I want to I'm sure she's going to be moping and stuff in this movie like she does but I also and she play a good stoner but I think that I want to see their chemistry I want to see what they what they can do but I have to be honest the main reason I want to see this is Max Landis Max Landis wrote this script he's kooky he's clever he's nuts and I love what the guy writes I love watching his stuff on YouTube and I like mm-hmm. to see what he's going to bring this this when you hear the premise at first you go well that sounds ridiculous then you tell me Max Landis wrote it and I go okay And then I saw the trailer, and I really enjoyed the trailer. So it's a movie to me that could be a lot of fun, and that's what I want to see in the movies. I am not looking forward to this film, although, I mean, that can just set me up to be really pleasantly surprised, which I hope is the case. However, up until this point, I have not liked any of the trailers that I saw. Nothing in any of the trailers felt like this is something i got to see. As a matter of fact, a lot of the trailers made it feel very low budget. I mean, I said, however... Um, 
Collider.com released an exclusive clip a few days ago of this really hyper-violent action scene in a grocery store where you have Jesse Eisenberg, like, killing a lot of dudes. And that was the first time that I went, okay, I mean, this looks like it might be a little bit fun. I have never been completely on board with Jesse Eisenberg, and I've not yet been brought on board with Kristen Stewart. She has turned in a couple of great performances, but, you know, there was also Snow White. Um Right. So she, she's a little bit of a mixed bag, but with big upside and big potential. I'm set up to walk into this theater and be very pleasantly surprised because right now my expectations are a little bit low. So I have to admit right now I'm not really looking forward to it, but we'll see how that turns out. Yeah, I'm going to buy it. And um, it's mainly because of Max Landis as well. I mean, the guy's a kookball. He's weird. <laughs> he's crazy. Um, a lot of his ideas are refreshingly new. He takes something that's already a trope that's already been done and puts it, flips it on its head like the Victor Frankenstein film. Right. So... That's the main reason I'm looking forward to it. I also am with John as far as seeing the trailers. I felt the tone was all over the place. Like Topher Grace, Grace seems that like Grace? Was that, I thought it was Mark Ellis. No, yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, Mark Ellis seemed like he was in a different movie. Right, right. Um, but yeah, I'm, I am looking forward to seeing it. And I, I'm looking forward to being really pleasantly surprised. I love the premise of it. So I'm looking forward to it. All right, folks, we reached out part of the show now for Mailbag. Listen, if you've got a topic or a question you'd like us to address on the show, just email it to us anytime at collidervideo at gmail.com. So, Ashley, what is in the mailbag today? Justin Stair writes, I just went and saw Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. During the trailers, I saw a trailer for In the Heart of the Sea. Now, I was looking forward to this movie when it was originally set to come out back in what I believe was February. Should we still be looking forward to this movie? Was it moved in hopes of some award acknowledgement? Um, yeah, it's kind of funny because back in the day when Collider Movie Talk was still AMC Movie Talk, I remember um, Ron Howard did a little video for us for as an introduction. Do you remember this? Mm -hmm. For AMC Movie Talk one day. And he was like, hey, AMC Movie Talk fans, I hope you come out and check out my new movie in the heart of the sea, opening in like six weeks or eight weeks right. or whatever it was. It wasn't too far in the future. And we, I can't wait for you to come out and see it. And like literally like 72 hours we were doing a story of – and the heart of the sea has been pushed back like you know, eight months or whatever it was to the end of the year. And yet, if I remember correctly, Ron Howard said exactly what you just said in the letter. I think he said the studios now believe that this has some awards potential. And so they're moving it to later in the year. Now, they're not moving it to later in the year to increase its awards potential. What they want to do is capitalize on awards buzz to help the box office, uh, box office of the movie. So they think it's got some awards potential, so they're moving into a time of year when awards buzz can come out and hopefully drive more interest in the movie. It's really a financial decision because of the awards, but uh, I think you completely nailed it. I'm really looking forward to this movie. I, I, I remember thinking Ron Howard and kind of a Moby Dick kind of uh, movie. Okay, that could be interesting. And I think Chris Hemsworth is leading that film. Yeah. And then I saw the trailer, and I was completely on board. And then I remember Ray brought me the first poster. And it's just – remember that one? It's, just, it's from far up in the ocean. It's way yeah. high in there. You see the little ship. Then you realize there's a silhouette of this giant whale under it. And I just remember thinking, that poster is awesome. Tom Holland, our new Spider-Man, is also appearing in the film. Lots of reasons to be excited about it. I cannot wait for it. Um, yeah, as far as the question goes, the the fact that they're moving it not in January, always that's always a good sign. Yeah. <laughs> when you get put in January, then you start to hold your nose. But the fact that it's getting put there, there's a couple things. Remember, Ron Howard – suffered from putting an Oscar-type movie in the summer season before, and that was Cinderella Man. Yeah. Uh, Cinderella Man suffered because that's a movie that audiences in the summertime that are going to those big blockbuster movies aren't going to see. So it's very possible that the studios went and said, this guy, guys, this is not a summer movie. You know, it's just now they in that same conversation can be like, I don't know if it's going to be an Oscar movie, but it also is not bad enough to put in January, February. It should still come out this year. Let's put it in October, November, whenever it comes out and see how it does. I think that's probably the conversations. And then you have they've worked before. Uh, Chris Hemsworth and Ron Howard worked mm -hmm. in Rush and they right. got in their and Oscar. Great results. Great results. Not in the theater. But in as far as recognition from critics, and then once people started watching it on, uh, you know, Blu-ray or whatever, that's when people started raving about the movie. So I think that this is actually a good sign for the movie and a smart move because I think this movie would have suffered putting it in July. It's not. It's you're gonna have a few big scenes with the whale, but it's not a summer action movie. Yeah, I think it was originally pegged for February or March or something. Like was that. it? Yeah, I think it was originally pegged much earlier. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought it was coming out in like. But uh, you're right. I mean, June. it wouldn't have been yeah. a summer movie, and and it, I think it could have done decent business in February. 
February. But if they're right, and this is, is going to get Oscar buzz, then this could be very lucrative for them. What do you yeah, think? Yeah, it also looks like a really well put together film. You know, when you see those trailers, right. you're like, I can't, at least for myself, I was like, I cannot wait to see this film. So that they're they pushing it back exactly what you guys said. It's for the Oscars. Because people, that's the one thing, the one thing I don't like away, the way the Oscars work is people forget about all the cool yeah. movies that came out earlier in the year. And they're just like, only these last like three months really well, matter. Boyhood got a lot of attention at the Oscars last year. I'm just saying like whatever the it's companies rare. push, because yeah. the, all the studios have to keep that refreshment for all the people who are voting. Remember this movie? They have to spend a lot of extra money and try to get it sometimes even re-released in the theater. So That's why I'm hoping Ex Machina doesn't get lost in the shuffle. Mm -hmm. That's still my favorite movie so far. All right, what's next? Caleb Richards writes, On Heroes Tuesday, John Campia talked about Brian Singer taking the helm of Fantastic Four or being the man of all Fox superhero movies. I nearly threw my computer across the room. <laughs> Brian Singer's only decent X-Men films were X2 and Days of Future Past. Jack the Giant Slayer is his only miss. Did you watch Superman Returns or X-Men? Brian Singer himself said he wasn't a big comic book fan in the behind the scenes of X-Men. I don't get your infatuation for Singer. It's totally missing. Placed. Well, well to, to give credit where credit's due, it was actually Schnepp who came up with the <laughs> what I thought was a great idea of Brian Singer running uh, uh, the uh, Fox Marvel world, if you will. And I just thought it was a, a perfect idea. Let me address a couple of things you brought up there, the point by point. Um, first of all, you said the only two good movies, uh, X-Men movies, was X-Men 2 and X-Men Days of Future Past. Only two of the greatest superhero films ever made. <laughs> X-Men 2 is still in that conversation. Days of Future Past was a magnificent film. He's only done that. I don't understand your thinking on that. When you say, did you see the original <laughs> X-Men? Look, all film is subjective. Your opinion is no better and no worse than mine. But my opinion stands in stark contrast to yours on this. Did I see the original X-Men? The film that single-handedly resurrected the superhero genre again? The type of film where producer Charles Roven, who produced the Batman trilogy for Christopher Nolan, said at a Q&A, if there was no original X-Men film, there would have been no Batman Begins. That was the movie that made studios go... Well, no, we really can do this again. We really now. Blade 2 had already been out, but it was the way X-Men was done with such high quality filming and all that kind of stuff that it was that type of film that made Warner Brothers and other studios go, no, this genre, look, this genre can work and this can work well. We owe so much to that original X-Men film. Now, Superman Returns, I've said this before and I'll say it again. Superman Returns was a bad comic book movie but i still contend was a good movie but they just missed the boat they made a mistake they forgot that this was a comic book movie where superman's biggest fights is lifting things okay i yeah i got that but if you just looked at it as a human story i thought it worked quite well and i enjoyed the film but i totally understand other people's criticism of the film totally get it because it did fail as a comic book movie but i'm sorry the failure start stopped there when you look at films like apt pupil which is so good. When just the other day we were talking about one of my top 10 all-time favorite films, The Usual Suspects, a, a just acknowledged as a masterpiece of a film. That's Brian Singer. When you look at one of the most underrated films of the last 10 years, Valkyrie, which I think is the, the most underrated Tom Cruise film ever done. That movie is a really solid film. He's done that. And then you look at what he did with X-Men 2 and Days of Future Past. Then, yeah... If you're going to get anybody to run the Fox Marvel Cinematic Universe, I think that's the guy to do it. Now, there might be some other really good names. Maybe there even be better names out there. But I think if you're a comic book movie fan and news drops tomorrow that Fox has appointed, you know, Brian Singer as their shepherd, he's now going to take, they're going to reboot Fantastic Four again, but they're going to create a, a coherent cinematic universe and they're putting it all under Brian Singer. Then I think as a film fan, you would be nuts in a purely subjective way, but you would be nuts not to be excited about that. And yes, his Jack and the Beanstalk movie was terrible, but every great director has a bad day at the office, and that, I agree with you totally, was his very bad day. That movie sucked, and it was his very bad day at the office, but man, if I got to put his Jack and the Beanstalk against Usual Suspects, X-Men, X-Men Days of Future Past, Valkyrie, Apt Pupil, I'm sorry, the weights go like this. So I, that's just the way I see it. Schnepp, we talked about this on Heroes a little bit, yeah. but your thoughts on that. Well, <clears throat> I think it's, it's, it's really easy for people to judge anyone from their last few films. So, you know, I mean, with Brian Singer, I'm like, I'm so happy he came back to the X-Men. 
Yeah. You know, I was like very trepidatious about it because I wanted Matthew Vaughn to make Days of Future Past. And Brian Singer had just made Jack the Giant Slayer. So you're sort of like, I remember hearing, why, why are they giving him Days of Future Past? It makes no sense. Then I saw the movie and I was like, wow. <laughs> yeah. Why did I even think that way? You know, because then you go back and then you look at all of his other films and it ha he has a style. He has a perspective and he has a way that he makes films. And for the most part, I'd say, you know, he's batting 90 percent. You know, if you take Superman Returns and Jack the Giant Slayer out of the equation, those films are it's an incredible body of work. So to have someone like that in responsible for like, hey, that's what we were talking about. It'd be great if he took over this, you know, this group and mentored other filmmakers into it to give them a stylistic, you know, plate to work from. You know, I think it's a great idea. Hey, look, you know, I'm sorry you destroyed your computer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I would be more than okay with Brian Singer running the Fox Cinematic Universe if it, if it became one. Uh, I actually would prefer Matthew Vaughn because I think he's responsible for the new wave of X-Men movies yes. because, you know, Singer made the choice to leave X-Men and do Superman Returns. Right. Yeah. And then Brett Ratner got a hold of it and almost killed the entire franchise. Right. And then it was Matthew Vaughn who rebooted it. Matthew Vaughn was supposed to do, he wrote a lot of Days of Future Past and was involved in it for a long time and then left. Right. And then Singer came in and knocked it out of the park. Either one of those guys I'd be okay with, but I got to agree with you guys. I mean, Brian Singer has an amazing body of work, and Usual Suspects, one of my favorites, at pupil, completely underrated. Um, so, yeah, he'd, he'd, be, he'd be all right to have uh, take a hold of this uh, universe. And a lot, a lot of people also forget, too, that I, sometimes you hear that so and so's a producer on this movie, and what it means is they were on set one day and got one other guy involved, and then they did nothing. Uh, Brian Singer was actually a very active producer with Matthew Vaughn right. on X, X Men. Um, uh, first class. First first class. class yeah. I was going to say new class. Yeah. That's a different show altogether. Uh, with his first class, and then they switched roles, and and Brian Singer took over the helm with Days of Future Past, and Matthew Vaughn served as a producer, and it was a good team. And the one thing I'll say, keep this in your back pocket too about about Superman Returns. I already said it did fail totally as a comic book movie, it, absolutely. But at least give it its due. Stand back and say, in an era where everybody's complaining that nobody, a lot of filmmakers don't take risks, they don't try try doing something totally different with something and reimagining something. Brian Singer made a Superman movie that I think nobody else ever really thought of making before, and he did something that was so different from the trend of superhero movies and made it very character centric and all that kind of stuff. I agree, though, he made some wrong decisions. In the fact that he forgot it was also a comic book movie at the same time. But that aside, I think a, a couple of his biggest misses had upsides to them as well. So, uh, yeah, I would love it if he. I don't think it's going to happen. So you don't have to worry. <laughs> right. I don't think it's going to happen. But I would just be really happy if it did. Thanks a lot for the question, though. All right, folks, that'll do it for us for this installment of Collider Movie Talk. Thank you so much for joining us. Listen, don't forget. Lots of great films playing at our friends over at AMC Theaters right now. Head on over to www.amctheaters.com for all of your theater, showtime, and, of course, your movie ticket information. The most important thing, though, is, of course, if you're watching this video, click subscribe. Become a subscriber to our Collider Video YouTube channel. Become a part of our community here. Comment, leave your thoughts, but you got to start by subscribing to the channel. Absolutely free, of course, and it'll keep you up to date on all the things we're doing here at Collider Video. And listen, if you love your entertainment news... And you want to keep up to date by the minute when what's going on in the world of entertainment, you must bookmark Collider.com. Steve Frosty Weintraub and his crack team of writers over there do an amazing job keeping you up to date. Just simply one of the best entertainment sites in the world. Go over, bookmark Collider.com. I want to thank the people sitting at the table with me. Sitting over here, Mr. John Schnepp. Schnepp, where can people find you online? You can find me at Twitter and Instagram, just at John Schnepp and at TDOSLWH. And you can find me tonight on the ultimate schmodown, the crackdown, the breakdown, their bracket <laughs> system, whatever it is. Me and Dennis, puppy kicker uh, Zang, are going to be over there <laughs> causing problems, uh, forgetting trivia questions, flipping tables. I might throw somebody's computer. It's not going to be mine. And, uh, yeah, we're going to be doing that tonight. It's at 7 o'clock. Harloff will be there. Campion might make a special, uh, you know, you know, throw computers uh, appearance. <laughs> um, I guess we're fighting some dudes called SourceFed. Yeah. I don't know what that is. 
But uh, I can't wait to meet him. I, one of the guys worked on the Jetsons, as far as I understand, well, right? Well, it's to be debated. Okay. Well, <laughs> anyway, that's where you guys can find me. And uh, go to www.tdoslwh.com and check out my documentary. Yeah, a couple of guys from SourceFed whose biggest claim fame is going to be the footnote that they got to fall to Schnepp and Zeng. That's pretty much going to be <laughs> it. Anyway, sitting over here, Mr. Christian Harloff. Christian, where can people find you online? I'm loving you channeling your inner Jimmy Hart. Uh, it, <laughs> it is, yeah, absolutely. The showdown tonight. Make sure you watch those behemoths go at it. Um, but Jedi Council, Collider Jedi Council, I want to first thank 